All right, you guys, welcome back. Thanks for stopping by again. Today is our first training tip Tuesday, so pretty excited for today's, and I just want to go over some steps and tips to get started on your private pilot's license. So let's get it rolling. First things first, if you're thinking about flying, you should probably go for a discovery flight. Make sure it's something that you like to do, that it doesn't scare you, that you'll be okay in the airplane. Make sure that it's enjoyable. Also, if you're married or have a significant other, you might wanna make sure that they'll be okay with it. Luckily for us, my mom was pretty on board with going flying and things like that. So it just was really nice to have a mom that was on board and supportive of me flying and my dad flying and the whole learning process. And now she's kind of like us where she doesn't like to drive anywhere. She would much rather fly, which is just a much better way of getting around. As far as that goes, you also need to consider your goals. Are you doing it for fun to just go play on the weekends or during the week? Are you doing it for work or things like that? Just lots of different things to consider making sure that if you're gonna spend this much time and this much money on something, that it's actually worth it. For me, I do it right now mostly for fun. I'm working towards a career in aviation, whether it be building or whether it be flying. So for me, I'm all about getting flight time, and building time and getting to those steps and checking off those check boxes. My dad, he owns several uh, insurance agencies throughout Arizona. And for him, the Arizona plane Wilbur is his Honda Civic. That's the one that he uses to fly to Phoenix or to Safford or up to Sholo, wherever it may be that day in Arizona. Once you have gone on your discovery flight and you've kind of taken into consideration all your options and your mission, your goals, what you want to do with your license, it's time to begin. So you got to start training. And most people, this is where you don't really know what to do or where to go to. The Bible of aviation, it's called your FAR AIM. It's your Federal Aviation Regulations and Aeronautical Information Manual. This one is from last year. I still haven't bought a new one, but if you get started, reading regs is super boring, but the AIM is super, super good. Highly recommend reading the AIM. Lots of good information in there. There's also several different books as well. An airplane flying handbook, call this the PHAC Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge. There's tons of different books, tons of different resources. The biggest thing after that is getting some form of test prep. I, when I got my pilot's license, just got the ASA test prep book and I just went through and I highlighted all the correct answers and was essentially just memorizing answers. That's not the best way to do it because sometimes it can leave gaps in your knowledge. But once you start flight training, you will really be brought up to speed on things that you might have kind of missed or may have been confusing when you were going through the questions and going through some of this stuff. A lot of that can be super confusing without an instructor to help you through it and work through it with you. Once you start flight training, your instructor basically becomes all powerful. You gotta do pretty much whatever they say, however they want something done, you kinda need to work with them. Obviously they're gonna do try to help you what works best for you and they're working for you. So always keep that in mind. The instructor is working for you, but they have a lot of experience, a lot of knowledge, and they really need your input and feedback to help them figure out what's gonna work because every student is different, obviously. Now, the nice thing is that if you're watching this, you're definitely probably a little bit older, an adult. So you just gotta make sure that you're on the same page with your instructor and that you're always working together to further your aviation knowledge and experience. Another thing you'll need once you start flight training, a uh, pretty simple basic one here, is you'll need a headset. For me, I've tried Bose, I've tried David Clark's, and I've tried Light Speeds. I liked the Bose, other than they didn't fit my head right because they kind of pinched the top of my head and the ears were a little too small, so they didn't go all the way around my ear. So after a while, they would push my ears back, give me headaches. They would pinch the top of my head, also give me headaches. 
The David Clarks, I just never, I didn't really like the noise cancellation with them and the microphone seemed to be a little bit weird. But when I switch over to these light speeds, like all of my problems were solved. They got the nice metal band, so they're really durable. They don't have a pivot up at the top here, so it keeps your head from <laughs> being pinched like the bows. You've got these nice big cups here that fit all the way around your ear. And the noise cancellation is, is incredible. And I also have Bluetooth so I can hook up my phone and I can make calls, I can listen to music if I'm just flying and dinking around. So for me, that's just my opinion. I love the Lightspeed headsets. So if you're looking to start flight training, I would definitely recommend Lightspeed stuff. But anyways, we'll continue on. Another key point, patience. You must be patient with yourself. I'm probably one of the worst at this. I am total perfectionist. I want it to be exactly right the first time and I don't want to have to go back and visit it ever again. Now, that's definitely not how anything works. You gotta practice, 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 make a bunch of mistakes so that you can eventually get better. I'll never forget my second flight lesson with Steve Maxwell. I don't even remember what we did, what maneuvers we were doing. I just got so unbelievably frustrated that once I got back on the ground, <laughs> my dad was walking towards the airplane, he's like, hey, how'd it go, da, da, da. super happy, like excited because his kid's flight training, you know? And <laughs> I, I threw the keys to Smurf at him, walked right past him and said, I'm going to work. And so that was, uh, that was not the greatest moment. So just be really patient with yourself. Your body is experiencing so many new sensations. Your mind is getting so much information that it can be super, super overwhelming. So just, you gotta be patient with yourself, be patient with your instructor, and just let things happen the way they're supposed to happen. Confidence is key, always remember, you are pilot in command. The final decision and final say for the safety of whatever flight it is, is your decision. So make sure that you are, you are the pilot in command. I wrote an article on this actually about a year ago, I think, almost exactly a year ago now. And it was about being pilot in command and not letting anybody else tell you what's what or how to do something. Like, you have to make sure that you are making the calls and that you're okay with what's gonna happen. Otherwise you get into some really bad situations really quick and I've been lucky enough and blessed enough to get out of them and a lot of people aren't. So just make sure that you're confident in your abilities and your decision making skills and everything else will kind of fall into place. On the flip side of that, humility is also really important. Aviation has a great, great way of making sure that we stay humble. I mentioned it on a lot of other videos, well, several other videos, about me making a bunch of mistakes. I make mistakes all the time. My last video, I got the epoxy all over my arm, then I had to redo stuff on Eric's canopy. Before that, I had to rebuild my rudder like three times on Wilbur. There's just, you're gonna make a bunch of mistakes. So again, patience, stay humble, don't let your head get big. A lot of pilots are, oh, I'm Mr. Macho, and throw all that aside and just make sure that you're staying as humble and as knowledgeable as you possibly can. And then kind of the last thing is you just gotta have fun with it. I mean, aviation is the, for me, the ultimate in fun. I get to explore new stuff, both in building and in flying. I get to see really cool stuff. I get to have a lot of fun with uh, Dalton. He's right behind the camera again. Get to have a lot of good times with friends and new experiences, new memories, so have fun. It's going to be a pretty lengthy process. Enjoy the process. Take the time to learn as much as you possibly can, and it'll be one of the coolest things that you've ever done. But that's this week's episode of Training Tip Tuesday. Thanks for stopping by. Hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Peace. But once you start flight training, it'll make it, it'll help you speed things up, and it'll, it'll all start to make more sense. Like I said, this is the worst time.